Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining me. I'd like to chat for a few minutes about The Wandering Earth by Leo Sushin. So, starting out, I'd like to have a disclaimer that I am trying to work on my pronunciation of Chinese names, but I'm probably still going to mispronounce uh, these Chinese names, uh, but I am trying to learn. So if any Chinese speakers want to give me any tips on pronunciation down in the comments below, I will appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, The Wandering Earth. This book originally came out in China back in, I think, 2010 or 2011, and then it, came, it was there was an English translation in 2012, and I read this book in 2016, and I also chatted the book. So I will link to the chat from back in 2016 uh, below. But the fun thing is that this book was recently adapted into a blockbuster science fiction film in China that was also released here in the United States with English subtitles. And so I did uh, recently see the film, and so I thought it would be fun to do a book-to-film chat. So I've done a few of these other book-to-film chats um, previously on my channel. So the format I've typically followed is I have chatted a bit about the book, then I chat a bit about the film, and then I sort of chat about both. So for this book, I've already done a chat. So um, well, let me start out by saying I'm not going to give away any spoilers to either the book or the film. So you can view this, uh, this video chat uh, and feel safe that you're not going to be getting any spoilers that's going to ruin the experience of either reading the book or viewing the film. But the... Um, yeah, so the, the book chat I've already kind of done, um, and I'll link to it below like I mentioned, but um, the book uh, is set in, in, in just a short sort of synopsis of it. It's set in the future um, where um, Earth, we have discovered that the sun is going to um, expand, you know, and go through its process of dying. Our sun is going to die. And, you know, but as it dies, of course, it's, it, it expands and it will end up swallowing the earth. And so the people of earth need to sort of get together and decide what they're going to do. And what they ultimately decide to do is to uh, propel the earth out of the solar system and uh, travel to the nearest to a nearby star and and put the earth in orbit around that star. So the book, this is a little novella, a little short novella that has got a lot of story packed into this little novella. Um, but that is basically the premise of the book. So the book um, has a couple of main themes, which I chatted a bit about in the chat when, uh, earlier. So if you're interested, uh, follow the link down below and you can sort of hear more about it. But basically, um, I think the, the, the main theme of the book was really a couple of main themes. And one was the transience of everything, you know, the transience of life on Earth. I mean, the book here, you can see the graphic of the cover. This is like a dandelion you know, with the seeds, you know, like getting ready to the window, like disperse them. So I just love this cover. I think this cover was so creative um, because, you know, the humanity is getting ready to disperse. And then also the transience of life um, itself, the transient transience of individual life as well as the transience of life of something like the planet. So that, and then also truth. Tr their truth, uh, the book really explores this idea of truth, um, you know, sort of capital T, T truth. What is true? When should we believe something's true? Um, and, you know, the difficulty of determining what is true, uh, but yet the necessity of trying to determine what is true. So, and then acting on that. So I know that sounds kind of confusing if you haven't read the book, but um, it just concerns truth and, and the conflict that arises when certain people uh, present a truth and then other people either have to decide whether or not they're going to believe it and the conflict that can arise around um, truth. Um, so that's kind of the theme of the book. The film, so here is is a graphic of the film poster or one of them I wasn't able to find one completely in English uh, but there is um, one I don't remember the one that was showing at my theater but um, yeah so this is a I could not find pronunciation guidance for the director but it seems like it's some the name is front guo so I hope I pronounced that somewhat right um, the main character in the film his name is Leo Chi and he's played by Xu Xiao, Chu Xiao Chu. I think that's right, uh, or close to right. Um, and then his father, then is, is play. His name is Leo Pichang, and played by Jing Zheng Wu. 
So, um, yeah, those are the main sort of the main characters. Um, the film is quite different than the book as far as its atmosphere. So the film uh, sort of is set in the same world where the Earth is is on its way transi transitioning out of the solar system. Um, so the book started actually when the Earth had stopped its rotation because the first step in this process was actually stopping the Earth Earth rotation and then firing these Earth engines, they're called, which have been, thousands of them have been just, uh, constructed across the Earth. Once the Earth stops rotating, then the Earth engines will be fired and then the Earth will start to propel itself out of the solar system. The, the film actually um, is in this process of uh, where this has already kind of already happened and the Earth's already on its way. So the book had as its main conflict this uh, argument over truth, really, um, and then sort of this philosophical uh, meditation on uh, transience, I think. But the film was really an action blockbuster kind of Chinese, uh, not Chinese, uh, science fiction, Chinese science fiction blockbuster where it's action driven. So it has a little bit different focus. So it's not quite so philosophical. Um, the conflicts that arise in the film are actually technological, more so than philosophical or social uh, concerning truth and whatnot. So, uh, but it's so I don't want to give away exactly what the difference of the it is because that's sort of their main. Um, uh, let's just say that in the film, the Earth's on its way out of the solar system and encounters difficulties, and so sort of the fate of humanity rests on solving these technical problems, um, and that did not appear in the book necessarily. Um, yeah, so... Uh, that's sort of the gist between the, the, the book and the film. You know, they're different things. So I enjoyed the book on, on the philosophical level, and I enjoyed the film on really an action, uh, action level. The film is got some really, really good effects. So what I think was really cool about the, the film was that this was a different sort of take on an action film than what we might typically see from Hollywood. For one, the, there is no, main hero so there's um it's a it's um it really requires everybody it's cross generational even as well as um you know uh the all the people of the earth sort of have to uh work together to solve this this issue and you know i think that a lot of times in the typical hollywood you know, blockbuster anyway there's an individual hero you know so, sort of saves the day and there's also sometimes you know like an arch villain and that really didn't play out in the film so much there was kind of a villain i guess which was a really a howl 2001 type HAL computer uh, issue on a space station that was um, sort of working at cross purposes to humanity, but not really because um, it had a point. You know, try the the ultimate goal was really to save humanity or try to save as much of humanity as possible, and so you know. Ultimately, though, decisions have to be made about the best way to do that, and so. Um, but I thought that was real cool, sort of how the um, the how that. This blockbuster, sci-fi blockbuster, this Chinese sci-fi blockbuster was a little bit different than uh, what we would get from from um, a Hollywood type blockbuster of the sort of the same theme. So I thought that was that was really interesting and cool, you know. And the the production values were just awesome. So the special effects uh, were just amazing, really beautiful. Some of it uh, as the Earth, you know. On, the earth engines fire up and the earth's on its way um, just some great effects with that and then the acting also I was really impressed with especially the dad the guy who plays the dad um, this actor uh, Zhang Wu um, so I think he is a martial arts um uh, uh, actor in China, very famous. Uh, I'm not uh, real sure, but uh, are, are completely aware of his career here in the U.S., but um, from what I read up on him, uh, he is a well-known actor in China. And he's a real, I thought he was really, uh, really the really portrayed the dad and really portrayed his conflict that he was involved with. Um, he's involved with a separate tech. The people on earth were involved with a technological conflict in the film. And then there's a space station in the film version that has a different conflict going on. And so the dad, the father uh, is on the space station and he is addressing that conflict, you know, and then also communicating sort of also off and on with the people of earth and their conflict. But both conflicts really are, are required in order to sort of, 
uh, resolve the issues uh, that are at play. So one thing that I'm really curious about from people who uh, are able to or saw the film in Chinese or saw the film that had the English subtitles and um, could re you know read along with the English subtitles but also knew the Chinese, I'm real curious about how the subtitles uh, translated. I got some comments on my Wandering Earth book chat um, that I did previously about the film and one uh, commenter mentioned that uh, at the end of the film, sort of, it was, uh, there was a discussion, or it sort of implied that there was going to be a, another film in this same, you know, uh, along these same lines that is going to, to uh, explore the social conflict, the rebellion that happens in the book. So I think that's going to be awesome if that's true, uh, because I think that that is, um, that is you know, I, I was really missing that part in the film, but I realized in the film we couldn't really have the technological conflict and the social conflict i mean there would have been a lot to pack into one film so maybe it's good to have another film come up and show us this conflict over truth that appeared in the book i think that would be awesome so um my favorite part of the film was actually at kind of at the end as the people of earth are saying goodbye to the solar system in the multiple languages of the earth i thought that was just a beautiful uh scene and you know the the, the visual of that of the of our earth uh passing out and through the planets and passing out of our solar system was just really beautiful and it was just really a, a really kind of touching moment that you know we are one human family and uh, we have to solve all of our problems together and it takes everybody working together to do that so uh, i thought that was also a great message from the film and from the book as well so anyway i enjoyed it very much so glad that i got the opportunity to i'm so glad that the, this this uh, novella got adapted into a film and the film was so well done it really wasn't quite the same as the book and that's okay that happens a lot from books to films um and i don't have a problem with that they're different genres and they're uh, they're giving the viewer and reader you're, the reader is getting a different experience from reading a book as opposed to viewing a film. And so the stories have to be told differently. And I don't have a problem with that. I loved the way that these stories were told both in the novella as well as in the film. So with that, I will I think I'll end this chat. But uh, if anybody else saw the film and wants to leave a comment, I would appreciate hearing uh, your views. So until next time, take care. Bye.